Hi, can you tell me which statement is likely to be correct? I like the headlight balance of my racket. It makes it feel more maneuverable, especially when I whip my racket around. Or I like the low swing weight of my racket. It's more maneuverable, especially when I whip my racket around. Before I reveal which statement is correct based on the science of how a racket behaves regarding balance point and swing weight, Welcome to episode one of a new video series, Racket and String Emits. All right, let's go inside. So what is the balance point of a racket? Well, it's a static measurement, meaning that it's taken when the racket is at rest. And you typically would measure that on a balance board like this. And it, it's measured in uh, units of plus or minus points or centimeters. And what it is, it's the uh, distance from the butt cap end of the racket to the point of balancing. Typically a racket will be 27 inches long. So in the case of this racket, I marked it in the red right at the halfway mark at 13 and a half inches. So let's say if this racket happened to balance right at that mark, and uh, if it did, uh, that would be considered even balance, but you can see that it's not. And when it's even balanced, that means there's an equal amount of weight on the handle and, and the head. But let's take a look at where this racket actually balances. So I have these blue marks on here, uh, right there. And you can see it's below uh, the red marks, meaning towards the handle. And so if I put it right there on those blue marks, you can see that the racket is starting to balance off. So this would be considered a headlight racket. Now let's say if uh, the balance point was beyond those red marks, closer to the tip of the head. Uh, of course, this is not going to balance, but let's say it did. Uh, then that would be head heavy. So let's say if the racket is head heavy, that's going to provide more power because of the fact that the balance point is closer to the center of the strings. And it'll provide more ball speed, assuming that the racket head speed is the same as a headlight racket. However, it takes more effort or more strength to swing a racket that's head heavy. However, a headlight balance is just the opposite. It provides less power, but it also takes less effort to swing. So in the end, the balance point does affect how the racket will feel when held in your hand and indirectly affects how the racket will feel when you swing it. Next, let's talk about the swing weight of a racket. And in scientific terms, it's dynamic inertia. And this measurement is taken while the racket is in motion in kilograms times centimeters square. Luckily, I don't have to calculate that. I have a Babolat RDC that has a swing weight function on it. So when it's measured, it's uh, four inches off the butt cap end of the racket. So you can see the yellow tape here. And this is where a player will typically hold the racket. So when it's swung in the machine, it's simulating what the player actually will feel. So as I place this into the clamp here, you'll notice that the yellow mark will line up right at this pivot point right down here. And when I turn it on, it's gonna swing the racket three times and come out with a measurement. If a racket measures with a high swing weight, uh, sometimes it'll have a head heavy balance, uh, not always, uh, but it's definitely harder to swing and less maneuverable. Now, if I take another racket here and take this measurement, the, a racket that has a low swing weight will always have a headlight balance. It'll be easier to swing and be more maneuverable. So in the end, swing weight determines how easy or difficult it is to swing a racket. A racket that has a higher swing weight will require more strength to maneuver, and a racket with a lower swing weight will require less strength to maneuver it. Now that we know that the swing weight is really what determines what the player will feel when they're playing on the court using the racket, let's take a look at what adding weight will do to the balance point and the swing weight of a racket. So I have my racket here that's customized, so you'll see that the weight here, the static weight, is 360. 36 grams and the balance point is at plus six headlight or 32.4 centimeters. Now, if you wanted to know what that headlight uh, units uh, are, it's one eighth of an inch from the even balance uh, uh, balance point. So at point at plus six, it's about three quarters of an inch 
uh, lower from the balance point, uh, from the even balance point. And the swing weight is at 339. So I have four grams that I'll be using and moving around at different parts of the racket. I have uh, two strips of two grams of tungsten tape. And we're gonna start at the 12 o'clock right at the head. And this is where it's gonna make the most difference in terms of uh, swing weight and balance. So let's take a look at the balance first. And we're gonna see it right here. Coming out at plus five. So uh, you can see that of course, adding weight to the head will make it less head light at, or at 32.6 centimeters. Now let's take a look at the swing weight because this is where it's going to make a huge difference here. So it started off at 339 and right now it's at 354. So that's a 15 unit difference and that, that would be noticeable. So earlier I mentioned that um, that uh, rackets that have a head heavy balance uh, will have a high swing weight. Uh, but you can see that my racket is still head light, even though it's um, it has a high swing weight. But let's take a racket like this one. This is like a game improvement racket where it's only about 9.5 ounces unstrung. So this one has almost the same, same swing weight as my racket, but because it's so light, it is uh, head heavy, and uh, that's why you would have a reading like that. So th this would be a type of racket that is light, but has a head heavy balance. Um, and my racket is heavy and has a head light balance. All right, so next let's take a look at what would happen if we move that four grams right to the balance point and earlier I showed you where that balance point was on my racket where the blue marks were. So I'm trying to put it right up as close as I can to that in, in the upper part of the throat. So you can see that I put it right, right in there, right there. So we're gonna take a look at the, the balance point here and it should match up with what it started off. Yeah, it's right there. So it's at back to plus six. And if we take the swing weight, we're going to see if that affected the swing weight at. All right, so it came in at 341. So that's two units higher, which makes sense because it is higher than your hand. So it is going to affect the swing weight, but not as much as it did up in the head. All right, so finally we're going to move this weight down to the handle and I'll just stick it onto the grip here. Now earlier I did say I customized my racket. Uh, I have a total of uh, six grams at the 10 and 2 o'clock area, area of the head and I have 13 grams of silicone in the, in the inside of the grip. So, so that's the reason why my racket is um, headlight and yet it still has a high swing weight. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and move this weight down here as if I was putting it in like how I did the silicone in my handle. We'll go ahead and take the balance here. All right, so now it's even more headlight. It's coming in at 7.5 or 31.9 centimeters. Now let's take a look at the swing weight. And it's back to its original swing weight uh, measurement at 339. So you can see that by adding weight to the handle of the grip, it's not making the racket any more maneuverable. Uh, it will though make it a little bit more solid or stable feeling because of the fact that you have the weight here. So at impact, uh, it's called recoil weight. When you hit it, uh, it will resist the racket from moving in your hand this way. Uh, it will make it more comfortable because of the fact that it's resisting that also. So it does help with stability and it does help with comfort, but it doesn't help with maneuverability.
Now, if you'd like to learn more about adding weight to the head or to the handle of a racket, I did a couple videos, so I'll leave those video links down below. You probably figured out by now which one of those statements is more correct than the other. And if you haven't figured it out, please comment below. Thanks for watching. Play with Aloha. And let your strings play. Now that you've figured out which of the two statements is correct, I thought I'd talk a little bit more about swing weight. And this is my take on it. So this is a chart that I compiled. And this is working with the clients that I string for and the students that I teach. So here I have the player type, the static weight, and it's unstrung, and swing weight. I, I did want to mention that if you go on the, uh, some of the websites like Tennis Warehouse, they'll list a strung weight. So typically if you want to adjust for the uh, strings, uh, my, my specs here are uh, 25 to 30 units lower because it's uh, again just the frame itself. And for the static weight, it's usually about 15 grams or about a half an ounce. So let's start with the juniors that are still playing with a 26 inch racket. So at that point, it is what it is. It usually comes pretty strong. And the racket itself is usually about eight to nine ounces and uh, I have the grams here. And the swing weight is about 230 to 250. A lot of them tend to be really low though, more like the 230. So from the first player type going to the second, this is where I think the swing weight is important, especially for the juniors that are about to transition into an adult racket. So before they get to this point, there are some juniors that I feel like they're not tall enough, but they're getting stronger. So sometimes what I'll do if the swing weight is uh, low like 230 i'll customize the racket by adding some weight to the head so that it gets it closer to a adult racket and that way when they make the transition to their first adult racket the swing weight is more familiar to them so i'll try to get it maybe halfway maybe in about the 240 to 250 range but uh let's talk about the uh the player type here so we have the I also have petite women because I've had women that actually use a junior racket. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. But uh, so this is the category here. Uh, the weight will be uh, in this range here. And again, the swing weight is typically on the low side. For my next player type, I have an average adult. And this would be anyone from 20 to maybe 50 years of age, uh, average size, and teenage juniors that are now moving from their first to their second racket. So. From this range here, I feel like most of them can play with a 10 ounce racket at that point. And then the swing weight will also increase because now they're playing against uh, bigger kids that can hit harder. So you always want to have a racket, the heaviest racket that they can swing with the heaviest swing weight that you can maneuver. Next up, I have the uh, strong adult and competitive junior. So for the strong adult, it's someone that uh, maybe a little higher level, at least the 3.5. Uh, and competitive juniors, uh, again, uh, players that are in high school and might be playing tournaments and uh, wanting to have an even heavier racket to handle the competition, meaning that they want something that will be more stable when playing against harder hitters. So again, the swing weight should be increased at that point to about 285 to 300. In this fifth level, I have high level adult and college level. So high level adult would be 4.0 four and above and college level. But not all college level players will play with a heavier frame. So this is, again, it's just a general guide, but typically this is the, the range that I, I've seen. And of course the swing weight should be even higher because of the fact that again, they're hitting against players that are hitting harder. And finally, I have a very strong adult or old school. So very strong adult would be a four or five level and above, uh, someone that's just really physically strong. Uh, old school is for players like me that grew up playing with, uh, well, my case, wooden rackets, and they were typically really heavy. So over the years, I've just kind of adopted the, uh, that feel. And typically the rackets are gonna be 11 and a half ounces or heavier, and the swing wave would be about 310. So that's my take on swing weight and how it relates to static weight and player type. Thanks for watching. Aloha.